Welcome to this tutorial on data handling with Python. In this tutorial, I will use the Jupyter notebook called b06-pynum.ipynb that lives in the course repository. If you open that Jupyter notebook, it looks like this. And the head title already suggests that this is rather a larger series of tutorials on data handling with data files the NumPy package and pandas. I will assume at this point that you know how to write and deal with function, functions, that you can import packages and that you know how to deal with packages. This very first part of the series on data handling deals with loading and writing basic data file types. What you would typically write in a Python uh, script is this here. Open, then the file name, and then the mode with which you want to open the file name. So the file name is typically just um, the name of a data file, of a text data file. Very simple one without wrapping like an XLSX file or docx file. Um, just here a basic text file, markdown file, or whatever. To be a little bit more precise, you can also use uh, paths to, te uh, to text files. That is then a little bit more uh, robust um, with reference to directories. Now, the second argument here of that open function is the mode in which you want to open the file. And there are a bunch of options here. The basic options are R, W and A are like read, W like write, and A like append. This might be a little bit confusing because if the mode leads to really reading or writing only, rather depends on if there is that little plus sign. So R plus will open a file in read and write mode, while just R opens a file in read only mode. So if you want to open a file in read only mode, um, it, that suggests, of course, that the file already exists. There is an additional letter that you see here, and that is B. And B refers to read only here in binary format. The binary format might be advantages in some uh, occasions where you want to use these 0 and 1 encoding only, but I will not go here into the details of the binary formatted files not here in this tutorial, not in the following tutorials. If you want to write a file, then you want to use basically here the w command, so write a file in the sense of creating also a new file. Again, you have here the b and the w plus options, also the b plus options. So, Write only means you open a file in write only, and w plus means you open it in read and write. Just note the difference. R means read only, w means write only, while r plus mean, means read and write. w plus also means read and write, but also creates a file if it doesn't exist. So all r's require that the file exists already. If you use w plus, you do not need that the file exists already. The third letter that I mentioned here, A plus, means append a file, append new data to a file. So append means when Python opens the text file, it will put the cursor not at the very beginning, so at the position zero in the file, but it will put it at the end of the file. So it puts that writing pointer at the very end of your existing file if you use A plus, uh, sorry, A. If you use a plus, or the correct one, then it also creates a new file if needed. I will walk you through a couple of examples of using these different modes in uh, the following minutes. One hint still here, we will use an opening file and a closing file command in the following, but what is probably much more coherent if you just want to read data from a file or just write it locally to a file, then 
create a namespace with that with statement. Then you would write here with open um, here then the file name and maybe the path to the file name here the mode and then the s file here means that this variable so the file variable only exists here in the namespace of that with statement so everything that is indented below the with statement let's have a look at how you can use that mode of read only a file for this purpose, I invite you to download here the pure numbers.txt uh, file. If you are working with a repository, it already exists here in the data folder. So you see here there is pure numbers.txt. You won't need to download it. If you are working somewhere else, um, just right click here on that um, link, save link as, and you will be able to save that pure numbers.txt file. So that is a raw data file. If you have already imported any raw data into some spreadsheet calculator that you might know from your favorite office application, you might remember that it was something like use a certain column separator. In Python, the open command does not uh, consider any column separator yet, and we need to address that separately. How does that work? Well, first we open the file. So here we are opening the pure numbers.txt file. Here now I am creating a data list. So that list will store the data that is in my text file. Then I'm uh, going here into a for loop and I'm looping here over the lines of the file. So the dot read lines function is a built-in routine of a file object that stems from that open command here. Now in that for loop, I am looping over the lines of my file. The pure numbers.txt file has a tab, so a tabulated um, sep column separator. So that is why I'm splitting now my lines here, so which are read as a string, with uh, that backslash t for tab. If you're using another raw data type where your column separator is a semicolon, you can just type here a semicolon or a comma if it's a comma and so on. So that will make here that the line string that we get here from looping on the uh, file object, uh, object lines is split into a list of uh, entries. So now we have the columns and we want now to, um, end, uh, to add these columns as a new, uh, as a, as a new um, sub list, meaning nested list of the initial data list. So that is now why I'm opening here another for loop. And here I'm using now a try and accept statement for the purpose that I assume that my data file contains numeric entries. So in the try statement here, I'm trying to convert now every entry that stems here from the line as a list huh, to a float object. The minus one indicator here in the brackets refers to the last item of the data list. So just remember, that is the data list where we want to put our data in. Here we append a new item to that data list. Now here I am going, or I'm referring to that last item, so that recently created item of the data list, to which I want to append possibly as a float the entries that were in my data file. In this case here, if I cannot convert the float value, then I implement here a print statement that says that string here is not a number and I'm replacing it with zero. Now I want to verify that the data list contains the uh, 17 rows here. So that is what I'm doing here within numbers of rows. So I'm just printing the numbers of rows here so that the data list 
dot length, and this is the number of columns. Finally, here, what I mentioned before, because I'm not in a namespace, I need to close the file object to avoid that Python is locking the file. If you were, were very attentive, you might have seen that I put your warning um, person s is not a number, but I didn't do anything here. So to make sure that this also happens, I need to add here a new line and append here at 0.0. .0. So now we are ready to run this code block. And that's what you get. We get here the number of rows, 17 rows, four columns, and these are the data that are in here. So you see here this created nested list of the data, everything is floats, perfect. Let's double check if that is in line with the data that we had. Looks good. Now let's have a look how to create and write files. Remember there are two modes, one is W, one is A. Um, here I will use uh, W now to create a new file. In this case, I will now assume that the data, so these pure numbers.txt file that we have just been using, contains measurements where the measurement precision was a one millimeter. So if there are measurements that are below that precision of one millimeters, then I'm not sure about this data and I'd rather replace them with an NAN entry, meaning not a number. So for this purpose, I'm creating here in this code block a new data list, then I'm looping on this new data list and I would append, as I have done in the previous code block, a new a uh, sublist, nested list, to my new data list. Now I will loop on the items of the uh, existing data list. We call it just that this data list here comes from reading the pure numbers.txt file. And if now the entry is smaller or equal than 1.0 millimeters, then I will append an NAN, not a number, to the new data list. Otherwise, I will append uh, the entry itself as it was. Then for verification, I'm printing here that new data list. And now, here I'm opening or creating a new file that I call now modifiedData.csv. So, comma separated value format I'm using here. And actually, Python doesn't care what you use. If you call it txt, csv, inp, or your own format, it will just write it as a text file. Now, to write the data to the text file, I will loop on the new data list, create first a string of the new line. So you may still remember from the tutorial on the data types how to use that um, a particular function here of a string. That means I'm using here a comma as a separator to join a list into one string. And I'm creating here a list by iterating on the elements of the row. So the rows are the nested list of the new data list. What I'm also doing here is I'm appending to every line a backslash n character that is a new line. So that enforces line breaks in the file, in the CSV file. You never see that actually in a CSV file, but it is needed to make these line breaks. Then I'm writing here this new line, so that string, to the file here. So that is, sorry, that is the new line and that is the new file and I'm writing here to the file. So I'm using the built-in write function of the new file. After that loop, never forget to close the file again if you're not using a namespace. So let's run that little guy and we see here we have some values replaced with an NAN that were smaller than the or equal to that one millimeter threshold. To verify if that worked out, 
you can just click here now on your newly created .csv file and you find here the NAN values with the line breaks correctly placed. Let's have a look at how we can modify an existing file. So in the last section, I told you we might have a measurement device that has a measurement precision of 1.0 millimeters. And I wanted to remove all values that were less than one millimeter because they were below the device precision. Well, but what I should also do is I should have rounded the values to uh, the device precision. So meaning to remove everything that is after the decimal point. For this purpose, I am now exemplifying here the usage of the R plus mode. So I'm reopening the modified data CSV file from above. If you didn't run that code block, you may run into a so-called IO error. So just recall here the tutorial on errors and debugging where I explain the error types and why we want to use this try and accept statement. So if you didn't run here the above code block, your uh, code block here will just jump into that statement here, that is print the file does not exist. Now, if the file exists, then it goes here into that conditional statement. So if this here is a true variable, it will jump here into this space here. Then the code block will open the lines. So similar as before, then it will take the modified file, put the pointer back again at the position zero. Why that? Well, by reading the lines, we were reading through the file and we came to the end of the file. So we need to put the pointer again back to the beginning to rewrite um, what is in the file right now. Well, but until here, we just put the pointer back to zero while the file is still full with data. To remove now the existing data, I'm using here the modified file dot truncate function to clear everything that's in the content with what I'm and override it with what I'm writing the next lines. So now I'm again as similar as to what we did before using here that for line in lines loop. Now I'm splitting the lines again here. So I'm um, converting the line to a list of a comma separated values. Then I'm adding here a new list that I call the numeric line. Now I'm looping on the line as list and I am here converting now every float entry or uh, sorry, not converting. I'm rounding every float entry to zero digits. And I'm pending then these rounded uh, digits here to the numeric line. If I cannot convert the entry here to a float, then the uh, accept statement here will become active and I will pen, append just the E. So that E is in this file really necessary. Sorry, that exception here is necessary because we had these NAN values in the modified data.csv file where the device precision was not sufficient. At the end here of that outer for loop, then I am writing that new line again with this dot join command here and I'm appending again the new line comment. After the end of that outer for loop, then I'm just printing to the console processed file and I'm closing the file again to not lock it. So let's run that file here. And if we now look at the modified data CSV file again, it will look a little bit differently. All values are rounded to zeros. If you want to append data to an existing file, that could be the case, for example, that for our pure numbers.txt, if those represent measurements, you find somewhere on a written protocol, somewhere on a paper in the lab for more measurements and you want to append them now 
to your data file. By strictly saying you can open just your pure numbers.txt file and t file and enter then number by number would probably be easier in that case. But maybe you're not finding just one file here, you might re uh, one line here of four measurements. Maybe you find 40 measurements or 400 measurements. And in that case, using that code here is very powerful. So let's use here the A plus mode to append these forgotten data to the existing modified data CSV file. What I'm doing here is I am opening, I'm just printing here once the uh, uh, working direction where we are. I implemented that here because I get sometimes questions now for where am I really working? Um, where's my user folder? Uh, this here is just a little um, insertion for uh, uh, getting this user folder here. Anyway, here now are my forgotten data that are four millimeters, three millimeters, one that falls again below the measurement precision, and then eight millimeters. Now, if the file exists, so that is here an option to uh, use the OS package and test if my modified data file exists, um, that is a little bit recursive here than to this try accept statement here, just that I'm not using here error handling, I'm just using here this ospath.is file check that returns a boolean, so true or false, um, it, that will return here true in my case. Then I'm using now here this with statement to open the file as file object and then I am appending this new data here just to, the, uh, to that file object. So in this case, very short, very simple, appending the data here. There's no for needed because we only have here one forgotten data line that I'm just converting to one list. I will also not need to close the file here because I'm using the with statement. If that was successful, then the code block prints data appended. If not, so because the OS path that is file return false, then it will print the file did not, does not exist. Now you have seen that there is this expression uh, expression here um, using a string and then join uh, the a list with that string here as a comma separated list or a semicolon separated list and so on, um, which works for certain data types, but not maybe not for us. So you may need to convert these data types here. If you're looking now for a challenge, you can take this expression here and try to generalize it for whatever data type is in your list so that it will join it to a coherent string for your File. For that purpose, you probably want to have a look again at the functions tutorial. Before you get to this challenge here, let's still have a look at if this code block here runs properly. So we got here my user directory or my current working directory printed to the screen. Data appended means we went to the correct um, block here in the if statement. Now there should be the last line here of measurements appended to the file, so 4, 3 and 8 millimeters and the NAN value here at the second position of the list, meaning 0, 1, 2. Thanks for watching this video on handling data files in Python.